I think the best way for me to explain my view on that is to bring it down to a, a very small uh, experience, which is my relationship with my now husband of about four weeks. Uh, we've been together seven years, and the last five years I've been working on the Red Pill movie. Uh, so he's seen me through quite a transition. Um, what really worked for our relationship was the first two years of our relationship, I was very much in, in the feminist mindset, and I did, and I, I'm not saying this is all feminist, and I'm not trying to, you know, um, put down feminists by saying what kind of feminist I was, but I did most of the talking, and he did most of the listening, and my moods really set the stage for how home life was going to be. Uh, so if I was happy, as I say, happy wife, happy life, uh, that was pretty much the case. I, I did the complaining and he did the resolving and I had a lot to complain about and mostly it was uh, housework and uh, what I thought were roles uh, put on me by the patriarchy, the expected gender roles of doing the dishes and the laundry and cleaning, even though we're both working roughly the same amount of hours, I may work an eight hour day and he would work an 11 or 12 hour day. But we get home and, and it was, uh, I thought, expected that I would have dinner ready and the house clean. And I really resented that. Uh, but he was also paying most of the bills uh, because he did make more money and I saw that as another uh, effect of the patriarchy and you know I did believe in the pay gap uh, as being discrimination against women at the time. I no longer believe that to be um, you know the, the short story of that. But uh, then I started making the Red Pill movie and a lot changed with that. Not only starting to hear men's issues and realizing all the ways that I have privilege as a woman, a white woman in today's society, um, but also seeing all the ways that men really are disadvantaged. Uh, How would you explain that, that you, the privilege that you have as a white woman? Because some people won't understand what you mean by that or will react yeah. against it. Uh, well, certainly if we had children, I, have, I would have a lot of uh, advantages there, especially if you're going through a divorce, uh, but also social uh, reactions. If I were to, to take my kids to the playground alone, there's no real question about you know me being on my phone or taking photos of them and, and walking alone with them. But if a man were to take his kids to the to the park and be taking photos of them on his phone, there could be and there have been police calls on fathers doing that. Let's see. Uh, in the dating world, there's a lot of advantages. Uh, you know. I mean, Warren Farrell maybe talk to you a bit about that, but that men still have the risk of um, approaching and, and hitting on women for the potential of a date, whereas women are have to say yes or no and, and get that privilege. And, and I, when I started to think, would I rather be in the position of having to approach someone for a potential relationship versus be approached, I would rather be approached. And, and it, it does feel like the power position to just say yes or no. I mean, if, you, if you're a royalty, that would be the position you're sitting in, not trying to plead your case and show your resume. So I, I started to see uh, that men today really do have uh, a lot of issues that I never thought about before, whether they're rights or just societal um, kind of expectations on them. Obviously, masculinity is is a really gray area for a lot of people where they don't know what is good masculine anymore. We, we hear toxic put next to the word masculinity more than we hear good put next to masculinity or, or positive masculinity. So uh, I think guys have a really hard time right now. And, um, and even if I'm you know, in, in a workspace and I'm the only woman out of you know, 10 people, I, I do feel that power of that my voice is the female voice in the room and um, you know I even making this film the red pill movie I was probably heard and listened to more because I was a woman making this film rather than a white man trying to make a film about men's rights um, so you know that's the culture that we're, we're living in today and and I'm grateful that you know my voice as a woman is valued and heard certainly and uh, but yeah, I do see a lot of issues that men are facing. So, so when I started to understand 
the issues men face and apply it to my own relationship. I, I started to wonder what my, at the time, boyfriend was going through with uh, maybe sleeping five hours a night, working 11 or 12 hours a day in a laborious job, um, and paying the majority of the bills and having that responsibility that if we can't make rent, it's really on his shoulders to figure that out. Uh, so after making the Red Pill movie, it was the first time in my life that I switched gender roles with him, and not consciously and not intentionally, but it just turned out that I had a lot more to do for work and I was, um, it, it made more sense for him to help me with my work than for him to work harder and me support him going to work. So we focused on my work and he became the, the homemaker type of gender role where he would take care of the dinners and do the cleaning and the laundry and dishes. And I, I noticed a lot of things that I hadn't seen before, such as I wouldn't notice when he did those kind of tasks around the house. And he would start saying, did you see I did the dishes? And I'd look around the kitchen like, oh yeah, oh thanks, okay. But the whole day I was focused on paying bills and getting the finances in order and it was really stressful. And I, I realized how much I hated being the provider. <laughs> um, I, I realized how hard it was to be the breadwinner and how stressful it was. And you know, you are thinking months ahead and what is the financial plan, whereas, uh, you know, back when I didn't have to worry about the finances, I was feeling underappreciated for, for cooking the dinners. Uh, but, you know, going to, into both roles, now I see that, that both really have um, a lot to be stressed about and worried about, and, and both really just want to be appreciated by the other and recognized for their contributions to the household. So long story short, I think moving forward for the genders and for relationships is really trying to understand how the other person is walking in their own shoes and what they're going through and the struggles they face and the stresses they have day to day and the contributions they do make. And you know, that's another thing is I've, I now see so all the sacrifices that men make for our society, whether it's the road work and the power lines or the soldiers. You know, I have family members in the military and, and war makes me extremely uncomfortable, so I usually just choose to never think about it. But when I really do start to think about the way that they're putting their lives on the line for people they don't even know, but a country they believe in, it's really powerful. And it, it you know, when you really think about it, you can't help but get teary-eyed because it's, they are, they are doing so much for our society and for their families. And it just, you know, it really saddens me that so many uh, men do go unappreciated. And, and I hate that women went underappreciated when they were, you know, the 50s housewife. Um, but I think we've changed positively in a new direction for women. And I would like to see that happen for men as well. Yeah, I guess for me, it's, that a space needs to be opened up that we we do listen to each other that and what you were doing with the with the film was showing there is another side to this and this is the same journey i guess that warren farrell went on that he was a big uh, player in the in the women's liberation movement in the 70s and then started at the same time setting up men's groups and saying and then the stories he heard in there kind of turned him on to, to realizing wow there are some stories that are not being heard men's issues with custody and wanted to be there for their children and not being allowed to be and all of these sort of things. And but it was when he was trying to bring those stories into into the what was then the, the women's movement and saying, look, there are these stories that are not being heard as well, suddenly they weren't interested. He was sort of pushed out. Um, so I guess for me it's like in in any dysfunctional relationship, the only solution is to hear both sides of the story and have a dialogue between those two. Definitely. And, you know, I, I think when I was a feminist, uh, the fear was that if you start giving credit to the men's rights movement or men's issues, that somehow your issues are going to be put on the back burner or that you're no longer going to be cared about or, or funding is no longer going to come your way for resources. And that, that was a big fear of mine. Um, you know, I think there is some debate about whether or not this is a zero-sum game. 
A lot of people in the men's rights movement say it's not a zero-sum game. Compassion is not a zero-sum game. But then you can't make the argument that there, there is an allotted amount of finances towards uh, you know, any kind of social issue. And if we are going to care and talk about men's issues and try to find ways to help them, which may need a lot of funding, where is that money going to come from? So it's not an, an easy thing. And I think there, that's why there is so much resistance to the men's rights argument is uh, fear over funding and, and time to care about these issues and air time to talk about these issues. And, uh, and also when you start realizing that men have so many issues of their own, you can't really say it's, it's one group in entirety that's oppressed by the other group. And now we're talking about we're all in this together, we all have issues to care about. If, we're all, if we all have issues, is that going to just make them like there's a tie? There is no game, there is no race, it's just a tie. And now are, are people not going to care about any of the issues because there's not an enemy with a victor?